should have brushed my hair. Hi everybody. Oh boy. Mental health in the Asian American community. Not gonna lie, this is a tough one. Not that it's difficult for me to talk about it, there's just so much to talk about. Being honest, I hate Facebook. Like, I hate it. Being even more honest, I only got back on Facebook to promote these videos. Sorry. But I decided to join a couple of groups because I've noticed that Facebook has changed since I first got on it. So let's see, I joined Subtle Asian Mental Health, Subtle Mixed Traits, and Asian Mental Health Professionals. Pretty sure that's the title. And let me tell you the conversations in those groups. Whew. Anyway, it got me thinking about how far we've come as a community regarding mental health, but it also reminded me of how far we have to go. So I was a little inspired. I wanted to make a little video about how Asian Americans approach that topic. And no, no, this is not an in-depth video because there's so much that we can talk about. I just feel like not a lot of people really understand it. So this is the start. Also, I think it's one thing to talk about mental health within the Asian American community if you are Asian, but it's an entirely different thing to educate people who are not part of that community, which is what I actually hope to do with this video. So low key, this one's for the non-Asians because really almost all Asian Americans have gone through this or are aware of this stuff. And I don't know, if it's well received, maybe I'll make a part two. Also, for those of you who are not Asian or Asian American, I really hope that you can take something away from this video. All right, if you don't know, I am a current dual degree graduate student pursuing a Master of Science in Sport and Human Performance and a Master of Arts in Clinical Mental Health Counseling. So with that, it's a goal of mine to raise awareness for mental health within the Asian American community. And on top of that, in the future, I am really hopeful that I'm going to own my own practice and I want to be able to create a space for either Asians or Asian Americans to go to for therapy. And like, I mean, not that they can't go anywhere now, but I have noticed that people find it easier to open up to other people that relate to them. It's no surprise that an Asian person would want to see an Asian therapist because there's a much higher chance that they're going to understand that cultural background and how that influences them. So yes, that's another big reason why I want to make this video. Oh, and I am biracial. I am half Filipino and I am half Italian. So anytime I speak on my own experiences, it's from the perspective of a Filipino. First and foremost, Asian American is actually an umbrella term for Americans who have Asian ancestry. So there's a lot of diversity in that term and it's really important to recognize the differences. And those differences are between Asian cultures because not all of them are the same. Not all Asians are the same. The mental health experiences from Cambodian Americans to Viet Americans is gonna be completely different. Same thing with Laotian Americans and Thai Americans. But I wanna use the term Asian American today to just speak generally. Because regardless of the specific ethnicity, there are a lot of similarities between Asian cultures. Also because I don't want to speak on the behalf of a culture that I do not identify with. That would be very weird and not make sense. All right, within the Asian American community, there are a lot of common sources of stress that negatively impact mental health. The first one and probably the most <clears throat> the first one and probably the most common is the pressure from their parents to be successful both financially and academically. The tremendous amount of pressure that people face makes it really discouraging for them to seek help. So what happens is their thoughts are, in order for me to stay focused, I just have to deny and ignore whatever I'm feeling. Taboo. Even the thought of bringing up mental health concerns is considered taboo in a lot of Asian cultures. And again, because of this, Asian Americans tend to dismiss or deny their emotions. If you dare to bring up any kind of emotional weakness, you'd let down the entire community that you represent. And imagine being told that from people that you look up to and that you trust and the damage that that does. Their individual value. Some Asian parents put a label on people who express mental health concerns. There's this idea that your individual value is dependent on your ability to take care of yourself and your family. I've even read that for some, it's, it's like taking away part of their identity or it's like taking away their purpose. It's the ultimate form of shame. So raise your hand if you've ever heard of the model minority stereotype. And if you aren't familiar with this, it's this view that portrays Asian Americans as being the most successful minority group. And that success stems from their ability to have integrated into mainstream American culture, which also means they were able to overcome the challenges of racial biases. Another thing that I often don't hear is that it's a balance between two cultures. I mean, think about it. You have your Asian culture and then you have your American culture. And not that it's a bad thing. It's just that some people have a difficult time identifying. Some people have trouble developing that bicultural sense of self. 
They want to be prideful of their ethnic background while also embrace the country that they grew up in. And the last common source of stress is family. Family obligations that are based on traditional and cultural values. A lot of Asian households teach their children to control their emotions. If you're too emotional, that could mean that you either complain too much or you don't take initiative for yourself. Could also mean that you can't even think for yourself. There's also the family sacrifices made from their parents in order for their current family to be successful and live happily in America. Living the better life. Older generations believe that they've experienced a lot more hardship or real trauma and challenges. Not to say that's not true, but that influences how younger generations feel guilty or feel really ungrateful about sharing their own mental health concerns. Especially when they know that the struggles and challenges that their parents faced happen to tie in a lot with survival. That, that in itself is a whole different video though. So you might think, if there are so many stressors that impact mental health, why not seek professional help? Well, if it were that easy, we would not be having this conversation. Especially with older generations, you will have a hard time finding an Asian going to therapy. In this community, people seek support and help from their close friends and loved ones, their own personal network. They'd rather talk to close friends, family members, and honestly, even sometimes people in religious communities that they're in before they even think about seeking help from professionals. And why is that? The stigma around mental health, of course. But honestly, in their defense, it's not easy finding an Asian counselor or therapist. I'm working on it, everyone. I'll be out in the field in just a couple of years. But when you think about it, why would it be easy to find an Asian therapist? If Asian Americans are taught to not acknowledge your mental health concerns, why would they choose to go into that field in the first place? I know you're probably asking, why did I choose to go into this field? Another video. So let's just say they wanted to break the stigma and then try to seek help. Another issue that they face is that they may lack the awareness of where to find those resources and where to find the help. They may have absolutely no idea what kind of services are available. And let's say they do manage to find an Asian therapist. Is that Asian therapist bilingual if necessary? We can't forget that language can be a barrier, which makes accessing mental health services that much more difficult. So if I'm being honest, in my opinion, it's so easy to blame culture for the reason why Asian Americans don't seek mental health professionals. Is that right? No. Seek help from mental health professionals. We think that the way their culture stigmatizes mental health is the only reason. Well, if I'm gonna be real, if we continue to accept that, we ignore the role that we all play in enhancing that stigma. So if we allow that to be the only reason, aren't we letting that stereotype persist? Especially when Asian Americans have that second culture that their parents don't. Mental health in the US is not the same as their family's country of origin. It's almost mainstream here. But I don't know, I don't know, that's just my opinion. So let's go back to that model minority stereotype for just a moment. A lot of my network is comprised of Asian Americans. I mean, it makes sense because I'm half Asian. But with all the conversations I've had and all of my experiences, I've seen more people hate that stereotype than to feel complimented by it. I mean, from the outside, it sounds amazing, right? People in the Asian community are successful, they hold great values, blah, 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 blah. But through that, a lot of Asians and Asian Americans become fearful. Their fear comes from being looked at negatively for being weak or even crazy for having a psychological disorder. And there's so much shame and embarrassment for breaking that streak of being strong. So in the end, they struggle in silence because who wants to be that person? That need for success and to succeed takes priority no matter what it does to you. There's a huge difference in being stoic and denying your emotions. So yeah. That's it for today. I really want to know if this issue is the same for Asians in other countries. Are Asian Australians feeling the same? Is it different? I mean, like, what about Asians in France? I'd love to hear your thoughts. We just scraped the surface today. There are still hundreds of layers to get through, but this is a start. And again, I want to see how people react to this because if there's a lot of people that have a lot to say, I'd love to make more videos going more in depth with this topic. So let me hear it. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. I know that I made a video before on Filipinos, mental health and nursing. That one was a little bit catered to the struggles within the Filipino community, but it also was about the struggles that came with the career choice that they were meant to do. If you enjoyed today's video, please feel free to subscribe. If not, I completely understand, but consider following me on Instagram. My handle is Intricate. Otherwise, I'll see you at the next one. Thank you. Bye.